Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the outstanding pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am pretty good, Brian. How are you doing? I am doing well, Matt. We're we're almost there. We're uh, 10 days away from the Kentucky Derby, so the excitement here is building in Kentucky, and you sound like you're feeling a little bit better this week, which I'm very happy to see. Yeah, a little bit better today. Yeah, thanks. Good. All right. Hey, we're just going to go over the Kentucky Derby horses, Matt. Of course, we don't know the field. We don't know the draw that's happening this weekend. We'll know a lot more for our big Tuesday show next week. But for now, we're going to look at the probable horses for this field. We're going to talk about each horse, whether they're a contender, pretender, how much we like them, whether they're bettable or not. Let's roll. And we're going to... We're, this will be, Matt, in order of their points. So you're going to see some of the favorites right away on top here on our first graphic. Let's roll it. There's number one on the points list, Matt, Sierra Leone. And Sierra Leone, we both have as a win contender. I don't think that's uh, a lot of new information, but we're going to talk a little bit more about Sierra Leone, Matt. We've liked him ever since we saw him. Uh, well, may, maybe sold as a yearling for $2.3 million, the son of Gunrunner. But uh, we liked what we saw in the Remsen when he made that big move from last. Uh, he got passed by Dornick late. He got re-rallied on. But Sierra Leone has just moved forward. He beat a great field in the Risen Star, an impressive rally to win the Bluegrass. He's a win contender for me. Yeah, have to absolutely agree with that. Like everything that we've seen, from Sierra Leone uh, this year, for sure. His last two races, absolutely. Uh, um, were, were, he was clear cut the best, and, and of he, along with uh, Fierceness, are the consensus top two in the Derby. He's a deep closer. Deep closers have won the last two Derbies, Brian, but since the points era began back in 2013, only three deep closers have won. Often those deep closers, some of those deep clo closers are were very, very pace dependent. A horse like Rich Strike two years ago. I don't know if Sierra Leone is quite as pace dependent as like Rich Strike was. He's much more talented than that. Oh, yeah. No, he, he's not as pace dependent as Rich Strike. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, he's going to have to for, – for me, it's not so much the pace with Sierra Leone because I, I think I think he's a 10 for a long horse. I think he is one of the best horses in this crop. I think he's going to come running down the Churchill down stretch strongly. But traffic, traffic when you come from 17th early or 19th early, that's a concern. We'll, we'll look at the odds of Sierra Leone, whether it be – in uh, 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 daily doubles with the Oaks or a uh, win uh, on uh, race day to see if he offers good value. Both Matt and I have him at number one, but he's far from a sure thing. Also, Matt, I should mention horses from Keeneland, horses from the Bluegrass haven't done great in the Kentucky Derby in recent years. So uh, there are a couple of knocks against Sierra Leone, but certainly we have him as a win contender. We also seem to agree on number two, Fierceness, as a win contender, Matt, Obviously, Fierceness has been sensational in all three of his career wins, not so much in his two losses. There's concerns about whether traffic, whether a less than perfect break in a huge field will uh, kill Fierceness's chances in the Kentucky Derby. And that is a real concern for me. Also, again, looking at value, what, probably the favorite here, uh, but I had to put him as a, as a win contender on my list. Had to put him on that list for sure, Brian, because he is, without question, the fastest horse in this field, head and heels over the rest of them. His victories have been brilliant. His speed figures have been brilliant. He is one of the horses in this field that has already run a race fast enough to win the Kentucky Derby, which is not something we can say about a lot of horses in this field who in terms of, you know, their uh, uh, their speed, their fastness 
are going to have to make a significant improvement to get to that kind of level in the Kentucky Derby. Now, that happens a lot, Brian, because the Derby is like no other race. Uh, They run faster than they've ever asked to. There's so much adrenaline flowing. The horses are going to run faster than they ever have. But uh, 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 can they get to the level to be Kentucky Derby winners? Fierceness is fast. Yes, uh, he's got to handle adversity, but everybody's got to handle the adversity that can happen in the Derby. Yeah, everybody's got to handle it, Matt, but fierceness has shown a, a propensity not to handle it in his two losses. So that is a concern for me. Also, there should be a decent amount of speed in the Derby, and that, that's another concern as he stretches out to a mile and a quarter. You said it, though. He's the fastest horse in the race, and there's a reason he will be the favorite on Kentucky Derby Day. Number three, again, we are in agreement here, Matt. Uh, this, I think, I think we're going to see more differences as we go down the list. But for right now, Catching Freedom, the winner of the Louisiana Derby last time, uh, Flavian Pratt will ride this Brad Cox trained horse in the Derby. Uh, seems to be moving forward. He's another horse who likes to come from off the pace, but with two stakes wins moving forward, he seems to be going the right way for good connections as we get closer to the first Saturday in May. Yeah, and I like the way he did it in the Louisiana Derby, uh, which was his final prep race uh, uh, for the run for the Roses. He did it in that one and three quarter, we want one and three sixteenth mile race, the longest of all the Derby preps. Um, <clears throat> a lot to like um, for this one. Yeah, Catching Freedom looks like a horse that is very usable in in all your tickets because I think after the top two, he will offer a little bit more value and a horse probably very likely in my eyes to run a good race. Whether that means he's fourth or fifth or first remains to be seen, but we include him as a win contender contender here in the Derby. Uh, Number four, again, we agree, Stronghold. Stronghold coming from California for trainer Phil D'Amato. Uh, Antonio Frezo will get his first uh, mount in the Kentucky Derby. He was excited as they crossed the wire first in the Santa Anita Derby. This is a horse I wonder about who he's faced so far, Matt, but uh, you can't knock what he's been doing in 2024. Yeah, I guess he comes into this race, Brian, as the best horse coming from the West Coast. I mean, frequently uh, the the best horses in the Derby are the West coasters, but not so much, uh, not so much this year. And I agree. Uh, um, you have to question the fields in the Santa Anita Derby and the Sunland Derby that he won. He has just not run, uh, races that typically are fast enough to win the Derby. Yeah. And, and you, you're saying that as a point and, and I understand why you're saying it, but, Somebody's going to win the derby. Somebody's going to win the derby. We know that, and and I don't think that only fierceness is is a horse who could win the derby. And you don't either. I realize that, but I guess my point is, yeah, somebody, somebody, and this is the time of the year where somebody does pop up and 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 and, and show that they've improved over the spring and 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 peaked at the right time. Stronghold is a contender for that. Having said that, I think he's more likely as a board hitter rather than a winner. And I feel the same way about resilience. Resilience is a horse I'm warming up to again. I picked him as my top pick in the Wood Memorial at at reasonably good odds, Uh, but um, the Wood Memorial didn't necessarily say, wow, resilience is one of the best horses in the crop. Uh, Having said that, Bill Mott's got him moving the right way. Resilience ran in that tough, tough risen star, two starts back, ran pretty well. Uh, but maybe that race is why I think he's more of an exotics contender if he runs a good race rather than a winner or a likely winner of the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, uh, certainly his uh, last two performances make him worthy of consideration, uh, the kind of consideration that we both are giving him. But yeah, I see him more of a horse that I will consider using <coughs> in the trifecta, possibly in the exacta kind of uh, wager. I think he'll need to take a little bit more of a step forward uh, in the Derby, but he's from Bill Mott, so capable of doing that. 
All right, Matt, we're, we're uh, done with our first page here with Forever Young, number six on the points list. We agree that all six of these horses are contenders in the Kentucky Derby. He's the fourth one we consider a win contender. Having said that, I, I don't think I can have him on my tickets. And what I mean by that is I, I don't see that there's great value with Forever Young. I think there's too many question marks with Forever Young. Having said that, I really do like what I've seen from him overseas. It's just a tough, tough thing to do what he's doing coming from Japan, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and now America for this craziness that is the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and I think that's why we both have Forever Young listed as just a win contender because let's face it, looking at looking at horses like Forever Young from the past, winner of the UAE Derby, the Japanese horse. Quite frankly, they haven't shown up very much uh, in the past. So I'm looking at Forever Young as well. I don't know. Could he be the one that finally breaks out of that mold? Well, okay, if he does, he could win. But you know what, Brian? If he doesn't do that, I don't think he's going to show very much. Yeah, I, I guess I'm kind of with you there. I, I, I think he is one of the better horses we've seen come over, but there's been a lot of good ones, and they're 0 for 19. Horses from out of the UAE Derby are 0 for 19. None of them have finished first, second, third, or fourth even. The best finish for a UAE Derby horse in the Kentucky Derby was fifth. So it's tough. It's tough to make him take him seriously as, as probably the third or fourth choice in your or real series. But I can understand why people like him, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if he won. But for me, he's one of those contenders that I'm probably not going to play. The next uh, group on our uh, chart here, Matt, for contenders, pretenders, Kentucky Derby. We're going to look at number seven through 12. Let me pop that up. There it is. Uh, it gets tougher with some of these decisions. I have a, I have a hard time with Endlessly. I really like Endlessly. Um, Endlessly is a nice horse, obviously. He's only lost once. There's a couple things I worry about endlessly. Obviously, he's never been on dirt before, and there were questions whether he liked dirt. Seems to be working okay at Churchill Downs since he's been there. My other question is, clearly the best race he ran in was the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, and that's the one where he finished out of the money. I wonder what he's been racing against. I wonder if this is really a good spot for a nice horse. So for me, endlessly is a pretender. Yeah, and I agree with those uh, the things that you said, Brian. I, I also kind of feel like if, if uh, uh, you were asking me, do I think that Endlessly is going to run in a derby right now? I don't. I don't really think he's going to be in the field. I think ultimately they are going to opt to to run him on the grass. But we will we will sh see about that if he is in the derby. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, some impressive performances, but he's going to have to show more. But uh, with his running style, I think he has a chance to uh, be a horse that could get into the exotics. Yeah, and, and horses that are coming out of that uh, now called the Jeff Ruby Stakes for the last several years have done well over the years. So endlessly, certainly a horse to at least consider in the Kentucky Derby. I think Doorknock is another horse that wouldn't shock me. I had to list him as a pretender because I just don't think his races this year are good enough. However, I've seen horses, we've seen horses who Keeneland and Churchill are pretty different tracks and they don't run their best. Doorknock was uh, involved as they turned for home and kind of faded as, as the fourth place finisher in the Bluegrass. I could see him move forward off that race and run a much better race in the Kentucky Derby. Probably still not good enough to be uh, a winner or or top two or, th or three. But Doorknock is one of those horses that just wouldn't shock me if he ran a good race on Derby Day. Mage's full brother. Still, I had to call him a pretender. Yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, um, you know, I, I understand you're pointing out the differences between Keeneland and uh, Churchill. But looking at his fourth place performance in the Bluegrass to me, uh, Keeneland should have been a track where Dornock was showing his best, and, and he just really uh, came up kind of empty uh, in the stretch. You know, we're at the point where you got to trim uh, down the horses you're going to consider. So 
doorknock got the toss label from me. Yeah, and, and you make a good point because he did have a good race as a two-year-old at Keeneland, so that bluegrass was certainly a little disappointing for doorknock. Uh, number nine, just a touch. I think you like him a little bit more than I do, but we both – uh, list him as an exotics contender. I think he's a very talented, talented horse. Only three races, though, one being a sprint, second to uh, 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 Sierra Leone last time uh, in the bluegrass. I just feel like just a touch is probably not ready to win the Kentucky Derby. That's my feeling, having handicapped uh, decades and decades, decades and decades of Kentucky Derbies. But he could become one of the best horses in the crop. I do recognize that. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I think he's shown enough, uh, Brian, in the bluegrass and in the Gotham uh, with his performances that, it, it, to me, it's less of a stretch for him to make another step up in the Derby. Yes, the experience factor uh, um, uh, is not a, a big positive for me. But he's a horse that I'm going to consider using in the exotics. Yeah, just one two-turn race so far for just a touch. But Brad Cox, Florence Giroux, good connections in the Derby. Number 10 is a hard horse for me to call a pretender because I think he is a very, very nice mm -hmm. horse. I would love to own track Phantom. He runs nothing but good races. He's got experience at Churchill Downs. But there's speed in this Derby. It's a mile and a quarter. It's a deep field. It's a talented field. I just don't think Truck Phantom is going to stick around and be one of the top couple horses at the finish. I had to call a horse I like a pretender. Yeah, I did too. Uh, and there is so much to like about Track Phantom. And I know that we liked him in, in, in his early victories on the Derby Trail. But yeah, Brian, there's other speed in there likes to be forwardly placed and just, you know, quite frankly, his last two races as the distance is extended, he, uh, uh, what had less and less left at the end of those races. Yeah, that's true. You're going to get some nice odds on a good speed horse, but uh, probably not for us, Track Phantom. Number 11, West Saratoga. This is a horse I actually thought of as a bomb, as a long shot possibility to sneak into the exotics I, I couldn't convince myself his races of late are just not quite good enough to do it but then I do look at his last race at Churchill Downs where he won the Iroquois nicely is West Saratoga a horse that could sneak in Matt uh there's a lot of you know it, it's a neat story with his trainer and and uh yeah, and it is kind of interesting that this is the horse that won the very first Derby points race heading into this 2024 Kentucky Derby. And here he is uh, uh, going to run in the race. But uh, but still, um, I, I, I just don't think that he's got enough to uh, make any significant impact in the Derby. Yeah, I'm with you. Had to call him a pretender. Number 12 on the list is a horse that a lot of people like. I've seen a ton of people talking about Just Steel. Part of that might be the mystique of the octogenarian D. Wayne Lucas training West, uh, Just Steel. And, and, and a lot of it might be a good second place, a solid second place finish last time in the Arkansas Derby. But I've seen Just Steel with a lot of races. And yeah, on his best, like that second in the Arkansas Derby, he's a pretty good horse. But honestly, I like... 10 horses, 12 horses, as much or better than just steel in this race. I, I had to call him a contender and a uh, pretender, excuse me. And, and I hope people do bet just steel because he will not be on my tickets. Well, you know, Brian, uh, you were talking about the lack of experience uh, factor with just the touch. Well, just steel's got plenty of experience uh, as we are used to seeing from horses from uh, the coach D Wayne Lucas. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, not, always consistent in his results uh, out there on the Derby trail at Oak Lawn Park, second in the Southwest on a wet track, then, then a bad rebel performance, but a bounce back for a really nice Arkansas Derby. Uh, I don't know. Could he get third? Could he get fourth? I don't know. Maybe. It's, it's possible. 
but uh, I I like him less than you do. All right, Matt, we're going to jump to the next page on our uh, uh, points list here. And number 13 is a horse that will be one of my top two long shots in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Honor Marie has great experience at Churchill Downs. In fact, all three of his races as a two-year-old were at Churchill. They were all good. He's two for two at Churchill Downs on a fast track. I like the way he's getting better this year. I don't think he was fully cranked up for that really, really hard risen star. He still rallied for fifth. Then last time he ran a good race in the Louisiana Derby. I'm looking for the son of Honor Code to run his best race of the year. And that makes him a very live long shot for me. I am as a win contender. Yeah, I have him as a win contender too. I, I, I like both of those points that you made about his races at Churchill Downs earlier in his career and about uh, uh, the nice performance uh last time in the louisiana derby this is the kind of long shot longer price that uh, uh i feel like you can use and use confidently uh as a horse that is going to get a finish in the top four anywhere from possibly winning to the superfecta there you go, Matt. I agree with everything you just said. Honor Marie is a must play for me in the Kentucky Derby. Next on the list is domestic product. By the way, let me say this about Honor Marie too. You might not, you, you might look at those connections, Ben Curtis in the saddle and Whit Beckman uh, as the trainer. But uh, Whit, Whit Beckman was with a lot of good horses, especially with Todd Pletcher and Chad Brown over the years. And Ben Curtis is an experienced uh, rider over in England. Uh, the Irishman has come over and had a good meet at the fairgrounds, and that's where he hooked up with Honor Marie. So I don't have a problem with his connections at all. Speaking of connections, number 14, I see Irad Ortiz. I see Chad Brown. Uh, however, I just don't think Domestic Product has done enough in his races for me to call him a real contender. So I have him as a pretender, even though I do like kind of like the way he finished the Tampa Bay Derby, but that was months ago. Yeah, I agree with you, Brian. Um, uh, and it is unusual that we are not seeing uh, Irad on uh, Chad Brown's first string horse, but here he is uh, uh, with a derby mount on domestic uh, product. Um, yeah, I, I there are so many others. Um, I don't think his performance have, have been particularly good or particularly fast. Uh, to me, um, I'm going to toss him completely. Yeah, and, and I'm not thrilled with the breeding for 10 furlongs. And you're right, he's he hasn't been fast so far. So um, I, I guess I like him a little bit more than you because you have him as a toss, but uh, pretender for me as well. The next horse on the list I do have as a toss, and uh, some people have been talking about Catalytic. I read his brother, Jose Ortiz, will be aboard Catalytic in the Derby. He's only had three races for trainer Safi Joseph, Matt. Two were sprints. The last time, yeah, he was second in the Florida Derby, but let's not forget that it was 13 and a half lengths back in second. He's a toss yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm just calling him a pretender because he's going to, you know, come with some decent odds. I don't think I'm going to necessarily use him um, in, in my wages and – I guess in the past performances, second in the Florida Derby looks good, but let's face it, he got sucked along uh, uh, in the uh, in the in the slipstream of fierceness, uh, uh, and you know ran a figure that was that was higher than others, but that was just because uh, fierceness was so fast with his winning time. Yeah, agreed. Uh, we're going back and forth between pretenders and tosses, Matt. Number 16 is another long shot that I actually will consider using um, as, as a bomb, um, maybe even more so than West Saratoga. I, I, I could see him ending up on my few, few of my tickets uh, underneath. Um, Society Man should be a big long shot. Uh, recently, we, we found out that uh, Frankie DeTore will be on him. That's probably not going to help his odds. But uh, if you throw out that Muddy Withers, um, his next two races at Aqueduct are good. And he's getting better. Still, I call him a pretender. But he's one of my favorite pretenders, if you will, Matt. <laughs> he's, he's your great pretender, uh, uh, 
or something something like that yeah this 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 is another one of those horses that kind of fits in with a whole bunch of other horses that's you know uh, had some decent finishes here and there but is going to have to show a lot more yeah he's going to have big odds but uh, there's lots of others to choose from in that category Shout out to trainer Danny Gargan for getting two horses in the Kentucky Derby with, uh, with uh, of course, Doorknock and now Society Man. Number 17, here's the other of my top two bombers, long shots in the Derby, uh, Mystic Dan. Matt, I'm going to ask you something real quick. We, we talked about speed. We talked about fierceness being the fastest horse in the race. Who were the two two-year-olds that had the highest buyer speed figure that are running in the Kentucky Derby? Well, that would be fierceness, and I and I assume you're talking about Mystic Dan. Mystic Dan, the top two two-year-olds, uh, speed figures, and I'm uh, looking at buyers here. Fierceness and Mystic Dan were the top two speed figures as two-year-olds last year. Matt, I'm going to ask you another question. Who are the top two three-year-olds this year with buyer speed figures? They would be uh, uh, fierceness and mystic dan same two horses if we're talking about fast horses we have to consider mystic dan mystic dan listen he, he's gonna have high odds because of that arkansas derby he was shuffled back early he was hit hard in the back stretch by a horse who is struggling to uh run a straight race in there mystic dan the fact that he got third i actually like the, the arkansas derby i like that performance He's a horse who can make a quick move. He's got a turn of foot, as we saw in that big Southwest win. He's a pretty fast horse. He's looked good over Churchill's track before for trainer Kenny McPeak. BJ Hernandez Jr. in the saddle. Mystic Dan is a horse who I think has a shot to really surprise people. Um, and you'll get a good price for that, Brian, but I just don't like the horse. I don't like him very much at all. I don't like the races that were that came for uh mystic dan before the south before his victory in the southwest and after his victory in the southwest yes he got a big speed figure in the southwest but he he kind of had a perfect trip in there he rode the rail he was running with the bias yeah he got a big price but i don't like him brian i don't like him at all all right that's what makes the uh, world go round we're we're a very different uh, thoughts on mystic dan mystic dan for me is a horse that i am going to use number 18 encino encino was my top pick in the lexington he won the lexington not but i really didn't like the way he looked so much in the lexington winning the lexington or in other <laughs> words i wasn't overly impressed to all of a sudden think he's one of the best 10 horses or 12 horses in this race encino kind of down the list on the brad cox depth chart for me I think he's a pretender in here. Yeah, I felt the same way. Hey, he's won. Uh, he's won three races in a row, though. Yeah, that that, that that's something. And Sino is uh, improving with two stakes wins in a row. I think he'll have to step forward though in this one. Maybe another horse who could be part of a pretty good pace in the Kentucky Derby. All right, Matt, we are uh, hitting our last chart here. Uh, these might go a little quicker. Grand Mo the first I have as a toss, Matt. Grandmo the first, uh, uh, third by 16th in the Florida Derby. Um, I don't know that he's going to all of a sudden do any better than that. I, I don't find any good reasons why to expect he will do better than that. 16 lengths behind fierceness in the Kentucky Derby means that he'll be uh, nowhere to be seen in the stretch of the Derby. Yeah, I feel the same way. A third in the Florida Derby third in uh, uh, in the uh, Tampa Bay Derby, which was not nearly as good a field as the uh, Florida Derby. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a real toss for me. Number 20 is T.O. Password. We don't know too much about him. He's only had two races in Japan. T.O. Password looks like a horse that I easily could have called a toss. Out of respect for how well Japanese horses have done of late, I put him as a pretender, not a toss. But rethinking it, I, I think he is kind of a toss for me. I, I can't argue with you, Brian. All right. Number 21, though, is, is one of those pretenders where I think, well, 
maybe Epic Ride has a shot. You, you know, I like Sons and Daughters of Blame. I like them when they get a distance. I like Epic Ride has uh, has had five good races. It's yet to be seen if he will get in. But if he gets in and he's 60 to 1 coming off that third place finish in the bluegrass, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know, Brian. Um, no. Matt's going to say no. All right. Well, uh, I would like to see Epic Ride get in as a horse to think about at least. Number 22, Uncle Heavy. I just have a feeling Uncle Heavy is better than that fifth place finish in the Wood Memorial. I already said the Wood Memorial wasn't super. Uh, uh, he would be a huge long shot for trainer Butch Reed. They don't have a rider lined up yet. Uh, probably a toss, but I could see him rallying in the stretch, passing horses in the stretch, but that probably would only get him to seventh or eighth, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. I was expecting a lot more from him in the Wood Memorial than he showed. And finally, we included Seize the Gray, who's number 23 right now on the list. Uh, some people have uh, mentioned in the comments that they like Seize the Gray, and we haven't been picking Seize the Gray. And, and, and I think that came to fruition a little bit, uh, not picking him by his seventh place finish in the Bluegrass. I, I can't think about him as a serious derby contender in here, Matt. He's a toss for me. Yeah, no, I, I can't either, either, Brian, except that he is from the barn of Dwayne Lucas. And I think that's part of the reason and my racehorse, uh, why people are liking Seize the Gray a little bit more. And uh, rooting interest, hey, go for it. But Matt and I are, 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 are beyond rooting interest for the most part when we're handicapping these races like the big one, the Kentucky Derby. Matt, let me get a parting shot from you on our Pretender Contender show. Wow, that was a lot, uh, a lot in there. But you know, you, you folks that watch Horse Center all the time, you know what we're trying to do in here. We are trying to narrow down horses for different situations. I think, I think we've given you a handful of nice win contenders. Some that are, a couple that are the obvious favorites, but then some that are longer prices. So I think we've given you a nice. Uh, uh, Nice four or five win contender possibilities um, that you can use in your wager. And then also all kinds of horses to consider in the exotics. We'll talk more about that in our next show, though. Yeah, and if you want a lot more information on these, Matt, I, I should have mentioned it earlier in the show. Check out what Mike Shuddy does with this super screener. It, it really pays off in the long run over the years because the data of what's happened in derbies before and how these horses look uh, compared to the horses that have shown over history to either win or hit the board at good odds or perhaps be lower odds and and really have pointed themselves out as horses that are not likely to run check out the super screener a lot of information a ton of information mike shuddy does a great job with that so don't forget about the super screener that's it for this show folks i hope you enjoyed it next week will be a big show we'll be talking draw We'll be talking uh, pace analysis. We'll be talking suggested wagers, top picks. We'll be looking at the Oaks, of course, as well. So tune in next Tuesday for maybe the biggest, the most watched horse center of the year, Matt. I can't wait. Thanks for joining me today. My pleasure, B. And folks, have a great week. Until then, we'll see you next Tuesday right here on Horse Center.